8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. Tonight, Russia is still making most of the news one way or another. The official communist paper is Vestia. This morning supported Hitler's peace proposals with a vigor which surprised observers in other capitals, to whom it had seemed that Russian interests would be served by a continuance of a war in which Russia has so far spent little and gained much. His Vestia might, of course, be actuated by purely humanitarian motives. And today, German ships arrived in Estonian ports to begin taking the German minorities in the three Baltic republics back to Germany. There are 120,000 of those Germans altogether. Many of them are descended from the German settlers who conquered, settled, and built up those Baltic countries in the early Middle Ages. Now, apparently, the plan is to bring back to Germany all those who still want to regard themselves as Germans. If any of them prefer to stay behind, Germany, it seems, is no longer interested in them. How the property they leave behind is to be paid for is still unsettled. In past times, Hitler has spoken proudly of the achievements of the Baltic Germans, but so far we have had no reports of any press comments in Germany on this retirement from what used to be described as an outpost of Germanism. But there is an unexpectedly violent newspaper reaction in Italy. The Corriere della Sera of Milan says, quote, After seven centuries of battle against Slavic influence, the German minorities which have acted as sentinels of northeastern Europe have retreated. This mass exodus of Germans from the Baltic is viewed with dismay. This is the West, which retreats in the face of the Union of the East, a Union which continues slowly reaching all its objectives without shots or ultimations and without respecting recently signed treaties, end quote. Other Italian papers speak almost as strongly, and the Corriere Padano, which is owned by Marshal Italo Balbo, while it doesn't discuss this retreat of the West, has an article about Russian communists in general calling them tragic clowns and models of vulgar bestiality. Now, the Italian newspapers don't print this or anything else without government permission. What is the meaning of this sudden general anti-Russian outburst in Italy? And why is the Izvestia, speaking, of course, for the Russian government, suddenly protesting against the Allied opposition to Hitlerism on the ground that a war against an ideology takes us back to the Middle Ages? Russia suddenly more pro-German than anybody had expected. Italy suddenly more anti-Russian than anybody had expected. It would be useless to speculate as to what this means, but it is conceivable that it might portend some new shift in the European balance of forces. Meanwhile, as the German peace offensive seems to be making no progress, the fighting has become a little livelier. The French report that German patrols are very active between the Moselle and the Tsar, feeling out the French front. The British report a series of actions between German aircraft and British cruisers and destroyers, apparently in the course of German reconnaissance of the British naval positions. The British say they suffered no losses. Two German planes retreating had to come down in Denmark. Also, the British announced that on Sunday their ships fought a German naval squadron off southwestern Norway and that darkness enabled the Germans to escape. Whether they escaped back to German ports or out to sea is not stated. All this would indicate that the Germans are searching out the positions of the British fleet and the French army to see if there are any points that might profitably be attacked. When or whether an attack will come is, of course, still uncertain. Mr. Chamberlain told the House of Commons today that Britain and France stand by their determination to end aggression. He will apparently say more on that subject on Wednesday, as will Monsieur Daladier tomorrow. There is an undercurrent of sentiment in England which holds that the government is perhaps asking too much in holding out for a regular restoration of Poland, but we have no evidence yet that this amounts to much. Berlin reports that the Germans have about given up hope that President Roosevelt will come in with another peace move. But in Washington today, while debate in the neutral- on the neutrality bill went on in both houses of Congress, Senator Edwin Johnson of Colorado, not Hiram Johnson, said he thought the nation would welcome a peace move by the president. The same view was expressed by two newspaper columnists, one of the left and one of the right wing. But we have no reason to believe that the German government has made any official request for mediation. Such a request could hardly be refused by the head of a neutral government, but it is not ordinarily made except by the chief of a nation that is losing a war. Hitler is certainly not in that position. All we have had out of Berlin is semi-official hints that Germany would be glad if President Roosevelt made a peace move on his own motion. And it is remarked in Washington tonight that when Mr. Roosevelt has made peace moves before, Hitler did not always take the trouble even to answer them. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.